better be really careful. He could destroy Connacht, said the Taunashta to his leader. Oki, the one-eyed king of Connacht, glanced up from the fire. He turned from his Taunashta to his druid, and he said, He's that dangerous. Sir, he's lethal. He could lay desolation upon our province with a satire. This is ancient Ireland in the Fado Fado, and Oki, the one-eyed king of Connacht, with his druid in Taunashta, are sitting by their fire in the great fort where he rules from in southeast Connacht on the edge of a mighty lake. They're really concerned. Coming to Connacht is not some enemy warrior with a host that will kill all. Coming to Connacht is a poet, the chief Olaf of Ireland. In ancient Ireland, such was the power of our poets that with a quatrain, a rhyme, a stanza, they could make a reputation of a king last through the generations, a queen's beauty extolled for eternity. They could make crops grow in great profusion. They could protect the people. That was the power of their poetry. Most of our poets used it for good, to protect the people and to honor the land, our sacred island. But this chief Olaf, he was different. He used satire to get what he wanted, and the more he wanted, the more gluttonous, greedy, and grasping he became. His name was Ernia, and he was coming to Connacht. He was on a circuit of the country. The king, he said, we have plenty of silver, we have plenty of gold, we have much treasure that we can give him. But the druid said, be careful, sir. He can be very vindictive. What will we do? asked the Tonishta. And the king said, is far clue not one of it is better to have reputation than wealth. They had not to wait long for the arrival of the poet. The following afternoon, his chariot was sighted, coming along the side of the lake from the south. He had been in Munster. The great gates of the fort were opened, and in came two white horses. They were pulling a chariot inlaid with gold, and standing upon it behind his driver was the proud, arrogant figure of a hernia, the chief poet of Ireland. He was wearing a purple cloak. It was spangled with gold, and from it hung birds' feathers. He wore a great golden talk around his neck, and his fingers sparkled in the sunlight with precious rings. Oki, his druid and Tornishta, and the people of the fort, they gave him welcome. Mila Falcharod, Ersan Ri, said the king, come inside to my feasting hall, and we will honor you, chief toad of all Ireland. The poet was invited to sit on the king's throne. What an honor. He sat down there, oh, this poet so proud and arrogant. And he said to Oki, king of Connacht, Oki the one-eyed, they'd let someone with a blemish rule over them. That's unheard of. A direct insult to the king. The king smiled and he said, oh, it's such an honor to have you, a hernia, visit us here in Connacht. Will you stay for long? No, I won't. I have been away from Ulster for quite a while. I wish to return this day. Perhaps you have a gift for me to help me on my way. We have gold. We have silver caskets of jewels. Bring these in for the poet. I want none of these things. I have more than enough of them. I have been honored by all the kings and people of Ireland. I hear that your wife has a voice of great beauty, that she sings like a linnet. How about she comes in and sings for me while I dine? The king said, I'm afraid she's not here. She's visiting her relations on Inishbofin, the island of the white cow. She won't be back for some time. The poet's expression turned cold. He knew he was being tricked. His eyes glinted. So your wife is not here? Well, perhaps you could give me some precious gift besides silver or gold or jewels. You can have anything precious I possess. Anything? Anything. Give me your eye. I want the eye in your head, give it to me. That is the gift I ask of you. If you do not give it to me, I will put such a satire on Connacht. The crops will rot in the fields, the fish will flee its rivers and lakes and seas, and your people will starve. Turn them the hood. Give me your eye. The prosperity of a people depended on their king. Oki would not see Connacht in danger. His druid, his poet, their mouths dropped open as the king lifted up his thumb and stuck it straight in his eye socket. 
his eye popped out of the socket. And the poet reached over and grabbed it. And he threw it straight out the window and landed in the lake beside the fort. The poet, he laughed. <laughs> it will be remembered and spoken of to the generations. Such was the greatness of a hern of the poet that could even take the eye from a king. Slon, Uki, the no-eyed king. And he left the fort and his chariot, going along the lake north, back to his native province. The king, he was taken by the druid, his tarnished and retainers, his head bandaged. He was taken out of the fort over to the lake. He walked into the waters, the bandages he took from round his head, and he began to wash the socket from it, blood poured. The king was in agony, but he did not show it. He was shaking his head beneath the water, and he called to the ancient ones, Boan Ishka, Boan Osh, Boan Air, spirits of the water, spirit of the forest, spirit of the air, help me. And when he lifted his head, he laughed, <laughs> for the eye was back in his head, but not just one eye, two eyes. The eye he'd lost years before was also in its socket. The gods were honoring him for the sacrifice he made for the people of Connacht to keep them safe from the satire of a poet. That night there was great feasting of the fort by the edge of the lake, and when the sun came up, King Ochi walked the parapet of his fort. He looked towards the northwest over his lands of Connacht. His wife would soon be returning. They would live long and happily together. Then he turned and he looked out over the lake where he had washed his eye socket. It was stained red and remained so for seven days. And today, that lake we know as Loch Dur from the Irish Jarrell, red in the blood of a king's eye. If you go there, you'll come to the town of Port Tumna. And as you walk along the lake's shore, keep going southwest. Perhaps you will come across the remains of that great fort where a king ruled wisely, for though, for though, long, long ago, in Connor.